Hello and welcome to another Spass Ganger tutorial. We're back with Lua once more and we're going to be in part 5 this time, uh, which I think will probably be the final part because uh, there's really not much more to learn because Lua is actually a pretty small language. There are a few like really advanced things that I might cover in the future uh, series, which will be on game programming um, with Lua and Love2D, but it, it's really not necessary for the majority um, of the time. So anyway, let's go. We're in part five. Uh, we're going to be putting functions in tables uh, because we have our key value pairs. And the value can actually be a table because we can just assign um, a function to a variable. Functions are just like any other value, like a string or a number or something. And then we'll also have some other miscellaneous cleanup. So here's just a simple uh, example. This, this code, if you run it, will um, just assign we'll, we'll create a table and we will make a function inside the table named a and if we run xa uh, it'll print a so let's go do that all right here we go so we left off last time um, with our room in here but we're going to extend this a tiny bit more um, to add some extra functionality so uh, let's see we will we'll just have okay if if t is if whatever our t table is if the value is a string we'll just print the string out if the value is a function we'll call that function so we can add a little if statement in our um in our logic here to to check for what type um the value is so uh let's get to that right now so um if okay if input equals equals k print v all right so if type of v this is a built-in uh built-in function in lua it's a type so it will return the type and if our type equals equals um what type is it it's a string then we'll just print the string out um else Forgot my then. Um, else, if you know, it, we'll just we'll just assume it'll be a function. Otherwise, we'll call v, right? Just like that, and end. So that's literally all the logic we have to add. So it's really simple. And then in our, uh, let's just run to make sure we didn't break anything. Um, oops, expect. Okay, that worked. So let's let's create um, a new room down here where we have some custom uh, paths that kind of branch off, and we'll create a room com two, which will be a table. So our inspect command will be whatever we have here, and we'll just copy that and paste it here. Um, then we can just delete that. Uh, also, if input equals follow path. Now, here's the bit where it branches off. So this is going to actually have to be a function. So I'm just going to um, just going to enter here just so we can see what's inside our table. Um, add a new line so so we can see what's in there. Uh, let's make sure we put a comma at the end of this. All right, uh, and we will say uh, this is going to be a function. Um, for wait, what was this? This is to follow the path. So if we follow the path, um, we can only have one word at the moment. That's something I'm gonna have to fix because right now, uh, if we say follow space path, Lua will interpret that as two variables and we don't want that, we only want one. I could do follow underscore path, but that means the command will be follow underscore path, which is kind of awkward to type. So we'll add a little bit of logic later to uh, allow spaces in our commands. So follow, equals for now we're just going to call it follow the function and and we're just going to copy this code right here paste it in so now whenever the, the user types follow uh into the second room they're going to enter into this function and um that will get run there all right so uh that's done um and then our inventory and error um 
error handling is done automatically by our function. So let's just say room and our exit command will be follow path, which will just be follow for now. And will be room com2. Now I could redefine this, um, I guess. I could redefine this from, I, I could just say room com again, because that would just overwrite this previous variable. But um, I'm just going to leave it around because I think this is a little bit cleaner. It uses a little bit more memory, but eh, who cares? Okay, so we've got our value here. Uh, let's do this for the final room. We'll um, rewrite this final room here. So room com3 equals, and then that'll be a table. Uh, okay, we're going to have to define this beforehand. So have key equals false, because we're going to check that later in our logic. Um, and let's see. Okay, so our exit command is going to be a little bit more confusing now. Not quite sure if we're going to be able to do this with just that. Does it check for an exit command? Yes, we're going to have to have an exit condition too. We'll have to add that later. For now, we're just going to be able to exit when the user types open gate. Um, we don't have any ability to prevent that for now. But that's okay. We, we can fix that. So, uh, if input equals inspect, inspect is going to be a function, right? Because this isn't just a, a, we can't output one single string. We also have some extra functionality in here. And we'll end. Um, one thing, let me make sure. Yeah, there are all the commas there. Never mind. Um, so we'll delete that. Grab key. We have to add, so we'll just have to name it grab for now. Grab equals function. And have key equals true, and we'll print. Delete that code there. Um, open gate. Open. We'll just say open for now. Um, Right, and then everything else is handled except for pickup magic, which we won't really worry about for now. It was kind of silly. Okay, and we have to run our room function, pass it our exit command, which is uh, open, and our room com3. All right, so this should work. Let's see how this goes. Exit. Inspect, follow, and it's working. It appears that it's working at least. So attack, inspect, where are we now? Oh yeah, we're at the gate, okay. Open, it's locked and you escape. So we're just gonna have to add some logic here to uh, have the ability to check that our exit condition is met, not just an exit string. All right. Um, I'm just going to delete these comments because they're kind of getting in the way for now. All right. Um, first, first we'll add the ability to have spaces in commands because I think that's a little bit more important. Uh, and to do that, what we're going to just do is we're going to use we're going to do some string manipulation and we're going to say uh, convert um, underscores to spaces. That's all we have to do. So um, let's see. Where's one? Follow path. We'll, we'll just use this one as our example. And whenever we see an underscore in the key, we're just going to use a space instead. So if input equals equals k, um, dot, and then we're going to replace string dot repl replace. Uh, so Lua has a built-in um, command called a uh, built-in uh, function called gsub. Well, it's not built in, it's in one of the libraries, but it allows us to substitute a character in a string. So we're going to say string dot gsub, and string is the name of the library, 
string is the name of the library, g sub is the name of the function. So the string library has a g sub function and it comes along with Lua. So we're gonna say in this um, in this string k, we're gonna replace underscores with spaces. All right, so now when we run this, it'll check the input against a g sub string of k where the underscores are replaced with spaces. So if I type follow, un uh, we have our follow underscore path here. So follow path, follow space path will work now. All right, so let's run main.lua. Um, inspect, we can exit the cave, and then follow under, and then follow space path will work. And we uh, have our troll here, and we can now inspect, and we're at uh, the pathway. I mean, we're at the, um, wait, did that work? Oh, we, okay, here's why. Um, we forgot to change our exit command from fall to follow path. That was my mistake. All right. So now we can exit the cave, follow uh, follow space path. Sorry, and when we attack and inspect again, we're at the locked gate. All right, cool. So let's just um, let's just add our. Uh, underscores wherever we need a space. Follow path. And I think that was the only one that needed it. All right. So follow path. Inspect. Grab key. All right. Cool. We could even say open gate if you want. Okay. Um, and we have to make sure once again to say open gate is our exit command. All right. So we've worked our way down to uh, slightly less code, and it's a little bit cleaner now, and we have uh, more flexibility with our functions here. Oh, right. We should uh, add a way to check a condition. Yeah, this is what we're going to do. While not exit, so exit is going to be exit equals false. We're just going to have our, um, our t call exit, right? So um, I'm just going to delete to this. And in our room commands, if it's exit, Um, equals function alright so we're gonna say exit equals function and end alright so now exit we have to print that and we set exit to true room exit to true Right, so now when we run it, oh, wait a minute, forgot to update my second room. Yep, okay, that worked. All right, so um, what I've done, in case I didn't explain it, well, because I was kind of fiddling for the last couple minutes trying to figure this out. Um, all right. So exit room equals true and exit room equals true. We're just going to implement our exit uh, abil our exit functionality quickly. Uh, you open the gate and leave, right? And so that way, our uh, logic is handled in our um, room commands tables. So when we run it now, follow path. Attack it, expect, exit, all right, now, open gate, et 
that's not exiting the room. So why didn't that work? Oh, because I named it wrong. <laughs> Mm. All right, let's try this again. Exit, follow path, attack it, um, and grab key. Well, we'll try to open the open gate beforehand, but it's locked. So we grab the key now, um, open the gate, and we've escaped. All right. So, um, what I've done here is I've taken advantage of the fact that Lua uses global variables by default. And what I've done is I said, um, actually this doesn't need to be done here, this can be set right there. We say room exit equals false, but this room exit still uh, exists after our function is called. So while we're in the function, we're just, we, we can set it from our table. So room exit equals true, and once it's true, it'll break out of the function. And when we call it again, it'll reset room exit to false. So that's why we don't um, just drop through all the all the rooms and win the game immediately after exiting the first one, because um, we have this reset right here to make sure we set it to false first. But then, um, so so with every room, when we type exit or whatever our exit function is, uh, it sets this variable to true. In which case, um, our while loop evaluates to true, which evaluates to false, which means it, it stops uh, looping and continues on with the next one. So that's how we exit out of the room. It's, it's a really simple uh, solution to the problem, actually, after messing around for the last couple minutes trying to figure one that uh, worked. So I think this is pretty much a good, uh, a decent intro to, to what we'll be covering with the game development. Um, and we'll, we'll actually get to uh, programming some actual games now. Uh, I'm going to do a free YouTube version, and I think I'm going to do like a paid one as well that will go into more detail about some more advanced topics. Uh, and it'll be like the full process, including like art and everything. Let me know if you'd be interested in um, a paid version. Uh, I, I put a lot of effort into it and do crazy amounts of editing and stuff because uh, I don't really have time to do it for the free stuff, but if, if I was going to do a premium version, um, I, I could I could do that as well. Um, the The free one that I'm going to put on YouTube will be um, will be we'll, we'll just create a basic platformer or a basic um, Space Invaders type game. Uh, so it'll be a good solid intro, uh, and and uh, like a paid one would be more advanced things would cover like a full platformer game with menus and animations and everything so let me know if if you'd be interested in that um if not i'll i'll just do the youtube thing and um hopefully people that'll help some people out getting started with game development uh let me know if there are any other areas you want me to cover with the programming with uh in programming i've started doing some c development so i could teach you how to write games in c um, I could teach some, I could just do a quick intro to a few other languages, uh, from, based on your knowledge from this, uh, I'm not sure who, if anyone would be interested in that, uh, I could just do some highlights of whatever language, don't know, uh, but if, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments, and I'd be happy to, um, to check them out and see if I could make a video on that, so thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, uh, make sure to like, favorite, subscribe. Uh, and we will see you all later.